Okay, today we start 7.3, which is on volumes of solids. So if you look at your assignments, I think I already split it up into four nights. I'm going to spend four nights on this one session. Because there's a different technique for each one. So now hopefully we can think three dimensionally. Are we able to? What are you talking about? You took geometry, you took algebra two, pre-calculus, what next? Okay, let okay, well, let okay, let's just go back to elementary school already. Okay, what if I take a sphere, like an orange? Okay. I put I put the orange on the cutting board. You guys know what a cutting board is, yeah? Okay, first of all, before you can understand any of this, you guys understand what a cutting board and a knife is? Yeah. Okay, I take the orange. This is an orange now. It's a sphere like this, right? Okay, I put it on the cutting board, and then I'm going to slice it like this. Slice, 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 slice. I'm going to slice it like this. Like that. I'm going to slice it. If I take out one of these slices, if I remove one of these slices, what are you going to see? Cross section. Yeah, the cross section, which is a circle. circle. So like if I cut it right down the middle, then you're going to get a great circle, yeah? But then it has a thickness to it though, right? Okay, but what if I slice it over here, and then the slice is smaller, but it's still a circle, right? What if I slice it over here? It's smaller, but it's still a circle. And then what if I make a slice over there? It's smaller, but it's still a circle, right? Yeah. They're all circles. And that's what we're doing today, because if you add up all of these slices, don't you get the whole orange? So what we're going to do is we're just going to add up an infinite number of these slices to get the total volume. That's what we're doing. But we're making an infinite number of slices. We're not going to slice orange into just 12 slices. We're going to make an infinite number of slices. And that's why we do an integral. Because you know what an integral does now. It's an infinite sum. We're going to add up an infinite number of these slices of infinitesimal width. Each of these slices has a thickness to it like that. OK, now that's easy. Okay, you guys know what kamaboko is? Yes. The fish cake? No, I don't know. It comes on a block of wood, usually. <laughs> How can you eat a fish cake? In the oh, bento. The pink thing, the the pink pink thing, thing. in the <laughs> bento. <laughs> and I know, that's cool. It comes on a block, and then, OK, so like, OK. So here it is. I'm looking down, I'm looking at, I'm looking down at it from the top. It's on the cutting board. And then I start slicing it. I'm slicing it. Okay. If I remove one of these slices and put it in the bento, what does it look like? Doesn't it look like that? It's a semicircle, half oval shape, but then there's a thickness to it, right? So what you have to be able to do is you're going to be able to visualize this slice. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take the object, we're going to slice it, and then we're going to look at that slice. Because what is the volume of this just one slice? Wouldn't it be the area of this times the thickness? Yeah, so the key to this section here is you got to be able to find the area of that cross section. Then we're going to multiply it by the infinitesimal width, which is either dx or dy, and then we add them all up using an integral. Okay, now this one is easy because every single slice is the same, right? Whereas the orange, it changes as you go, yeah? Okay, so now are we ready? I hope so. Okay, let's say R is the region bounded by y equal x squared, which is a parabola, you guys know that. And then y equals x plus 2, which is a line. So this is the region in question. <coughs> now, we already know how to find the area of that, right? That was the last test. Top minus bottom multiplied by the infinitesimal with the error. Let's just write it for funsies. So top minus bottom, right? Because if you make the, in, in the, the, the strip, as Jaime Escalante calls it, multiply 
like by the infinitesimal wave. Some of you are still not writing DX. I was getting so mad. I had to take more blood pressure medicine. Did you get so bad that you just stopped taking off from her? <laughs> yeah, I didn't take off. But I was just mad that you guys didn't write it. And then you add up all of these rectangles from where is here and here. Some of you, I noticed you guys have problems finding the points of intersection yet. Wait, did you yes, and check for Pete's sake. Negative one to two. Did you take off what we didn't? Um, it's called drawing the box. No. I just get mad. In the privacy of my own home. So this integral here will give you, can you see why it's negative one to two? Because if you plug in negative one there and negative one there, you get the same number, which is one. If you plug in two there and two there, you get the same number, which is four. That's how you know it's the point of intersection. Or some of you, like, it's always setting them equal, but then you get these massive equations to solve. Why? If it's ugly, try guess and check. Okay, we already know how to do this. Okay, but now, okay, now, this is where you got to think. Hopefully you can do this. Okay, this is simply the base of the solid. Okay, this is a, I'm thinking of a three-dimensional object. This region is the base. You guys know what I mean by base? I think it's like a paperweight. Okay, what, what paperweight do I have on my desk? Well, I, are we recording? We better be recording. Oh, yeah, we are. Like here, here's a paperweight. This tape dispenser. What is the base? An ellipse, right? Okay, but this one, this is the base. So, okay. Now, every time I slice it, I'm going to make all these slices like this. Put it on the cutting board. Slice, 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 slice. If I take out this slice, each slice is going to be a square. Now, can you imagine what that looks like? See, it's, it's difficult to, to, to think of what it looks like. Lynn, no crinkling. If you want to eat that, you're going to use scissors to open it. But isn't the sides like they're diagonal? Yeah, but every time I remove, I put this on, I, look, I don't know what the shape looks like. I put it on the cutting board. I slice, slice, slice. I remove one of these slices. This is what it looks like. It's a square. But then, see, you got all of these slices. If I slice just do it once and get it over with. <laughs> if I slice it over there, the square is smaller. But every time I slice it, like over here, then the square is more medium shape, right? Every time I slice it, the cross section is a square. Can you imagine what it looks like? Okay, here. Here's, let me attempt to draw this three-dimensional picture for you. Pre-calculus, you guys learned how to graph three-dimensional stuff, right? Like this, x, y, z axis. Okay, so you got this thing. This is in the xy plane, and then you got this line, so like that, yeah? Okay, so every time you slice it, you get a square, so like. The squares get bigger like that. So it's kind of like, and then when you get to this side on the back, then the squares get small again. Oh, what does that kind of look like? Yeah, but then it's squarish though, yeah? It's more like, like a thumb. thumb. It's like a dragon tail. <laughs> tail of a newt. Dragon <laughs> tail, is that what you show? Okay, whatever, okay, but the thing is, who cares what it looks like? Dragon we want to just find the volume. That's all you gotta, you don't, you don't have to know what it looks like. You just gotta be able to compute the volume, okay? So, if I remove one of these cross, everybody understands that the squares change, right? Like over here it's small, then it gets big, it's big, then it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. If I add up all of these square slices, I'm going to get the whole volume. Okay, so here we go. What is the, what is the side of this square here? Doesn't the side of the square lie right along there? Right? And how do you find this distance? We did this last chapter. Top minus bottom. So which one's on the top? That the line is on the top and the parabola is on the bottom. And that will tell you the side of the square. See how there's variables in it? Because it changes. Over here it's going to be small, then it gets big, it gets big, it's small. If you know what the side of a square is, can you figure out its area? How? You square times it by two? <laughs> you square it. That's why it's called a square. Oh. Okay, let's go. let's go back 
in geometry if the sum of the square is s? Why is the area s squared and not 2s? Because it's s times s, not s plus s. That's s. I'm glad I drew that picture. So if this is the side of the square, what's the area? The side squared. But it has a thickness to it. Dx. OK, is it dx or dy? dy. dx. You drew the rectangle vertically, it's dx, people. If you draw the rectangle horizontally, it's dy. I'm telling you right now, the key to the whole problem is which way you draw the rectangle. You draw the rectangle vertically, the infinitesimal width is dx. If you draw it horizontally, the infinitesimal width is dy. Now, right now, it might not make a difference for you because it's easy, but when we get to the tougher problems when we start revolving it about axes and stuff, then it makes a big difference. Chen? Can't you just tell because it's, you're using axes, so it's got to be dx? No, no. Uh -huh. I'm telling you right now, your integral is going to depend on which way you draw the rectangle, not which way the equation is given. Because uh -huh. sometimes you're going to have to change these equations. The rectangle tells you everything. Okay, so does everybody agree that this is the volume of this rectangular slice? So if I want to find the volume of this whole thing, what do you think I'm going to do? Add up all of these square slices from? Negative one. There you go. And you guys know how to compute integrals by now, right? Now, some of the problems on tonight's homework, you just have to write the integral. You don't even have to compute it. You just got to write it. And then, so then, if you don't put the dx, I'm going to pounce on you. It's like a hungry tiger. That sounds threatening. A hungry, a starving puma. <laughs> OK, so that's the easiest one, square slice. Now, OK, what would happen? OK, now, start all over. What would happen? OK, now I have, I have a new solid now. I put it on the cutting board. Now I slice it, but every time I slice it, you get an equilateral triangle. So instead of a square, you get an equilateral square, triangle. So like over here, you get a small equilateral triangle. Over here, you slice it, you get a bigger equilateral triangle. You slice it over there, you get a medium equilateral triangle. Now, can you imagine what that looks like? All right, let me attempt to draw this. Do not attempt this at home. Okay, so you've got, you got the, the parabola thingy and the line, and then now every time you slice it, you get equilateral triangle, equilateral triangle. <coughs> and then they get bigger, they get bigger, they get bigger, 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 bigger. And then in the back, you get smaller, 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 smaller. So now it looks like the lizard tail, yeah? Kind of. No, a dragon tail. <laughs> tail of a dragon. Okay, whatever. Okay, we don't care what it looks like. We just want to compute its volume. Now, if you have an equilateral triangle, what is the side? What is the length of the side? Now remember, you take, re, you're removing this. So this rectangle is like that right there. And what's the length of the rectangle? Top minus bottom. So which one's on the top again? OK, why don't I just do the whole thing? Now if you know the side of an equilateral triangle, do we know its area? Yes, I told you this formula before. You were told this for SAT prep. You were told this in pre-calculus and algebra 2 in geometry. Now you better know it. What is it? Root 3 <laughs> over 4 times the side squared. OK, let's go back to elementary school. If you have an <laughs> equilateral triangle, the area is root 3 over 4 side squared. How can we not know that? That's what I want to know. OK, so root 3, otherwise you can reinvent the wheel of her. Just reinvent the wheel. I'm going I'm to use the formula I learned. 1 half base times height. <laughs> the base is s. And to figure out the height, i got to make a 30, 60, 90 triangle. And in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, if the hypotenuse is s, the short leg is going to be 1 half s. And the long leg is going to be root 3 over 2s, right? Because you've got to multiply it by root 3. So you get root 3 over 2s. So put them all together, what have you got? Bibbidi bobbidi boo. Why do you want to reinvent the wheel when your teachers kept pounding this into your brain? You never did. Yes, you did. And you're a special force. Hold on. If you were in my class, yes. Yes, that's me. So, root 3 over 4 times the side squared. 
That's the area of the equilateral triangle, but it has a thickness to it. Because it has a slice, it's a slice, right? What is the thickness? Dx and dy. It's dx because the rectangle is vertical. So that tells you the volume of this equilateral triangle slice. So to find the total volume of this tail of the, of the noon, you add up all of these triangles from Wait till the sun. That was it me. I just look at you anyway. That was it. This, is, this is the only year where you guys chop no. in. You gotta wait till the sun stops. From So the most okay on the AP exam, they just give right, you basic slices. Okay, so the slices that you're going to see on the AP exam are going to be squares, equal out of triangles. Next one, semicircles. Okay, here we go. Erase. Okay, semicircle. So I put this on the cutting board. So now it's a totally different paperweight now. Yeah, different shape. I put it on the cutting board. Every time I take out a slice. You're going to see a semicircle like this. Semicircle. So, this, see this thing? If I, so, that's like a comma vocal slice, yeah, like that. Okay. This, the diameter of the semicircle, is the length of the rectangle. And what's the length of the rectangle again? Top minus bottom. Now, it doesn't matter what the two graphs are, they're going to tell you what it is in the problem. You just make sure you go top minus bottom. Now, if you know the diameter of a semicircle, can you figure out its area? Yes, because that's why you took geometry before you took calculus. What's the area of a whole circle? I times, times, times the radius squared. So if you know the diameter, how do you get the radius? You half it. Every year, I don't know why students forget to divide it by two. So the diameter divided by two is the radius. Pi r squared is the area of a whole circle, but it's a semicircle. So times it by a half. But there's a thickness to it, Charlie. Yes. And then you add up all of these comma vocal slices from bring negative one to two. That was really fast. Okay, next one. <laughs> Isosceles. <laughs> we got two more to go. These are the basic ones right here. Wait, I want to draw it. I want to draw it just for funsies. No, it is, though. I want to draw it for funsies. That's not X, you dumb bull. X, Y, Z. Okay. So I can't concentrate. <laughs> okay, now, every time you slice it, it's going to be a semicircle. So small and small. Now they're getting big. 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 Oh. There. That's like a croissant, yeah? Right there. It's a croissant. Croissant. That's racist. So, Gyoza got the pinch. You got to pinch the edges. That's just silly. <laughs> My croissant got to curl more. It curls, look right there. No, it's the back because you can't see it. It doesn't have the credit. It just depends how you put it on the baking pan. You gotta let the bread rise. Okay, next one. Isosceles right triangle where the leg lies on the on this region. So, so when I slice it, if I remove a slice, that's what the slice is gonna look like. That thing is right there. Now, what's the length of the rectangle? Top minus bottom. Look it up. This is an isosceles right triangle. It means a 45, 45, 90 triangle. If you know the side, can you figure out the area? Square root of yeah. 2. Yeah, go well, 1 half face times height. Yeah. Or how about just go, hey, sister, it's half a square. Okay, so here. So square, oh, this is like this. Square. Half. Or whatever, one half base times side, do whatever you want to do. But it has a thickness, dx, and then I'm going to add up all of these slices from negative one to two. Are we getting the hang of this thing? Okay, and then the last one, the basic shape, isosceles right triangle again, but this time a hypotenuse lies on that surface right there. You get it? See the difference between the two? So if I remove the slice, that thing is going to be here. The length of the rectangle is there, so top minus bottom. 
Okay, now, if you know the hypotenuse of an isosceles right triangle, I'm going to find the area. Okay, let's, let's go to the SAT directions. I believe this picture is given on the SAT. S, S, S root 2. If you know the hypotenuse, how do I get the leg? Divide by root Divide 2. Divide by root 2. So this is x plus 2 minus x squared over root 2, and so is this side there. This is all geometry, people. So what's the area of this triangle? You want to go one half base side side, or you want to go? Hey, that's just half a square. OK, whatever, man. OK, so x, so here is the side of the square. So you square it, but then it's half, right? And some of the problems of tonight's homework, you have to just write the integral. You don't have to compute it. Make sure you read the direct really? stuff. But then there's a thickness to it. Yeah. Dx. And you add up all of these slices from negative 1 to 2 again. <laughs> and then once in a while on the AP exam, they kind of try to throw you for a loop. But then we, we're Iolani. That, that doesn't bother us. Yeah, no. They say the cross section is a rectangle where the length is three times the width. But the width is lying on the surface of the chopping board. <laughs> so the length of this rectangle is this, which is top minus bottom again, right? So if the length is three times the width, what would be this? What would be the length? No, three times this, right? So what would be the area of this rectangle? Length times width, people. But then there's a thickness. X, oh, it's square pool. And then you add them up from negative 1, 2. So all we're doing tonight's homework is slicing only. We're, notice that we're not revolving. Tomorrow, though, what happens when you take this and revolve it above this line? You get this weird upside down bun cake. Except somebody sliced something out of it over here. So that's tomorrow. So tonight's homework is all slicing. Now, the only way you can do this problem is they have to tell you what the slice looks like. Otherwise, you can't do it, right? OK, let me pass back the test. Uh -oh. Well, you can just, well, you want to start?